Hi, this is Maurice, a.k.a. Mo the Educator for AlumniRoundup.com. Uh, a lot of you know today's March 9th. Um, those of us especially who are incorporated and involved in the hip-hop community uh, know that on March 9th, uh, 1997, Notorious B.I.G. Or, or Biggie Smalls was murdered, uh, a case that, that still to this day remains unsolved. Um, one thing we do in the hip-hop community is, is we honor um, people who've died. They don't even necessarily have to be uh, loved ones, that we do honor them. Um, they could even be people who, who are enemies like, or, or even ideological enemies. Um, but we still, still pay our, our respects to them. I bring that up because uh, recently Andrew Breitbart passed away. Someone who and I would consider ideologically um, a, an enemy of mine. But somebody, you know, personally, I, I just you know, disagreed with his politics. And I still do want to, want to pay respects to, to him um, and Notorious B.I.G. Two people uh, who died uh, very young. So I do want to start there. Um, but I'm going to address uh, Andrew Breitbart and, and what has happened posthumously since he's died. Uh, his, his last big project, his last big project was um, what he called the, the proper vetting of Barack Obama. Because uh, he said, you know, that the, the, the president was never vetted properly uh, during his candidacy and during his run for uh, presidency. And, so now he's engaged and he's got this, this bombshell video. And if you take a look below this YouTube video, you'll see a link um, to one iteration of this bombshell video. So what's happening in this, in this bombshell video is it shows him hugging Professor Derrick Bell. Uh, Derrick Bell was the first black tenured uh, professor at Harvard University, uh, Harvard University Law, and was a professor of Barack Obama when he was a student at Harvard Law. So that's when this video is from, and they show him hugging Derrick Bell after he introduced him. So that in and of itself, of course, is, is meaningless. But what is uh, meaningful for uh, Breitbart and, and his, his media machinery now as they engage is that Derrick Bell uh, created something called critical race theory. Critical race theory is about the intersection, right? It's about the intersection of race, uh, the intersection of, of poverty in particular, socioeconomic status in general, and, and law, and where those things come together. And again, using the, the, the lens of race as a critical study of the intersectionality um, of, of all three of those things. And, and it's something that started, uh, that, that, that Professor Bell really initiated in the 1960s. And it was meant as a critique not only of American society, but it was a critique of the civil rights movement as well. So one of the things that, that, that will be said by Breitbart, these conservative commentators, is that critical race theorists like Derrick Bell are critical of the civil rights movement. And that's true. Critical race theory has a very different look at racism and white supremacy. Uh, critical race theorists say that, that racism and white supremacy are, are inherent in American society. They're a fixture. They're a regular portion of American society. Now, now granted, that's a, that's a decidedly more pessimistic, maybe, uh, view, but it's one that, that tends to be realistic for, for those of us who study and do critical race theory. So from, from, from that, what we're going to get is we're going to get this, this fear-mongering, right? And so their hope is that, for example, if you're white, this, this, this uh, critical race theory is a new boogeyman, right? Um, like, like Notorious B.I.G. said, uh, foes is shaking in their boots, invisible bully like the gooch, right? This invisible bully. Like critical race theory tonight is going to come to your bank account and take that decimal and slide it one place to the left, you know? So they're going to engage in, in, in this, in this fear-mongering and in, in these types of tactics. The other thing they're going to try to do uh, through, those, through those tactics is they're also going to start to make black people, for example, feel reticent. So, well, here's a guy who was hugging, a man who was critical of the civil rights movement. Maybe I, I shouldn't vote for him. And there are people, of course, uh, you know, from, from all walks of life and of all races who are critical of our president, and it's definitely their, their place to do so. So they're trying to, to, to play, some, play some politics with this. Now, and I've said my own piece, but let's take a look. Let's go to, to what Professor Bell actually says about, about critical race theory. Here's a quote. Critical race theory. Writing and lecturing is characterized by frequent use of the first person, storytelling, 
narrative, allegory, interdisciplinary treatment of law, and the unapologetic use of creativity. The work is often disruptive because its commitment to anti-racism goes well beyond civil rights, integration, affirmative action, and other liberal measures. This is not to say that critical race theory adherents automatically or uniformly quote-unquote trash liberal ideology and method, as many adherents of critical legal studies do. Rather, they are highly suspicious of the liberal agenda, distrust its method, and want to, rate, uh, want to retain what they see as a valuable strain of egalitarianism which may exist despite and not because of liberalism. So Professor Bell is critical of the civil rights movement. He does engage, and critical race theorists like him engage in using narratives and storytelling and, and creativity um, to make their point. So, the, 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 again, so going back to the scare tactic, see, that's what Professor Bell says. But the scare tactic is, ultimately, what are we talking about? So this is a critical race analysis of what's going to happen with these Breitbart bombshell videos. Understanding that racism and white supremacy are regular parts of American society. Let me stop there for a second. Let me break down white supremacy. There's lots of times, right? We think a white supremacist is the cat that's got the, the swastika armband and the, and the white sheet and the pointy hood, right? Now that's a white supremacist. A white supremacist doesn't even have to be a white person. A white supremacist is someone who believes in the either genetic or cultural inferiority of other people or superiority of white people. It's white cultural supremacy, right? So again, it doesn't have to be someone who's white, uh, who is a white supremacist. But we know then, because those things are part of our society, and, and this is me getting into the, the, the modern, right, the, the, the people um, on the political right who are going to put put forth these bombshell videos, right? We know that we can scare people to think that, well, here's Derek Bell, this professor of critical race theory, and critical race theory is against white supremacy, so actually it's against white people. And what's going to happen is the president is going to engage in creating injustice for white people to make white people pay for what happened to black people. But that's not even what Derrick Bell said. Professor Bell said that it's anti-racist, right? Like, uh, like Dr. King said, now this is where they're in agreement, right? Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So critical race theory is about creating social justice. So it's antithetical. It's antithetical to critical race theory to say that they're going to engage in black supremacy now. That's, a, that's an absurd notion, but that's that fear that's going to come in. Another thing they're going to try to do, right, and is, they think of another B.I.G. line, right, uh, when he said, as I lay down laws like Alan Coppin, stop it if you think you're going to make a profit. That's what they're trying to do. See, with these videos, they get you afraid. Then you go to these websites, you take a look at these websites, you click on the videos, and their advertisers are there. So the advertisers start posthumously filling the coffers of the brat of the uh, the, the Breitbart, um, you know, in, 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 the, in that cohort political movement. So they're trying to make some money off of this, right? So so that's that's really what's happening. That's a, that's a critical race theorist's um, analysis of how this is working. And, and then let me tell you this and send this as a message as a critical race theorist. We're going to continue to engage in the critical analysis of your acritical analysis. This is Mo, the educator, aka Maurice Dalberry for Alumni Roundup. We out.